September. But they are going to play soccer. And uh, I'm Scott Gray. Joining me again tonight on our broadcast, Gary Swanson. And Gary, we are going to have a matchup tonight between two teams, Boston College and Syracuse, that are both rebuilding and two teams that are having their problems at the moment, both below 500. So you know this is a game that they both want to win very badly. Well, Syracuse is 2-3. and three. Boston College 0-4-1. Both teams are 0-1 in the Big East Conference. Both teams need to win very badly tonight, Scott. Well, if Syracuse is going to come up with a win, one of the guys they're going to have to count on to put that ball in the net is Mark DeMonte. Mark DeMonte, he's a senior from Ontario, Canada. He's their big gun offensively. Last year, he had nine goals and seven assists. And the Orange men need him to produce goals if they're going to be effective tonight. And, of course, if you produce goals, the only way you're going to win is to keep the other guys scoring down. So tonight, that sure will fall to Chris Whitcomb. Tim Hankinson is very, very confident in his goalie, Chris Whitcomb. And he, last year he had 11 shutouts, .89 goals against average. Whitcomb's a very impressive goalkeeper. Then on the Boston College side of the ledger, they're looking for their first win of the season, so they're going to have to go to the experienced guys to try to anchor something for them. One of the guys that we have seen already this season has been very, very impressive, Chris Pace, the junior. Chris play, Pace played, played very well in the UConn game, which we saw right here on Nesson. He's a stellar performer defensively, and BC needs him to play very well tonight if they're going to keep Syracuse out of the net. And another fellow that Ben Brewster will depend on very heavily, you can be sure. Only a sophomore, but we have seen him so far play one good season and part of another one, Greg Schwakey. Greg Schwakey, just a sophomore, Scott. Very impressive scorer so far. Scored a goal against UConn and two, two goals against Maine. Both stingy defensive, defensive teams, so Schwakey can score goals. Gary, just a word about the field. It's a short nap artificial turf. It's a hard surface, and with all the water that's on it tonight, we might see some players sliding around. We're going to see a lot of players sliding around, Scott. We're going to see a very sloppy play. It's going to be tough to control the ball tonight. Well, that's a word about the game and a word about the conditions. It's going to be interesting, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after these messages. <laughs> Just when things are easing down, trouble starts up. And when the dust and everything else has settled, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer brew. You covered too. The Nesson golf cap can be yours for just $4.95. The Nesson hooded sweatshirt is just $18.95. And our colorful t-shirt is $5.95. Carry your Nesson apparel in our gym bag. It's only $7.95. To order, send check or money order payable to Marketing Incentives, 588 Pleasant Street, Nord, Massachusetts, 02062. Include $3 shipping and handling. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium at Boston College in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. We're just about ready for the opening kickoff of tonight's game. In goal for Syracuse, Chris Whitcomb, the backs, Mark Fish, Fred Paulson, and Steve Schaefer. At midfield, Raymond Bruce, Charles Mullen, Scott Oceani. Also at back, I should mention Jeff Silver. The forwards tonight, Andreas Montvilla, Sean Lilly, and Mark DeMonte. On the other side, for Boston College, Peter Zafino is in goal. The backs, Chris Pace, Ara Barsamian, Ken Allen, and Mark Egan. Midfielders, Jeff Monis, Pat Gilligan, Tom uh, Scribner, and Greg Schwakey. David Sullivan and Chris Lugosi are the forwards. The referee for tonight's game out of New Hampshire, Steve Grossman, and we are underway. And that is Boston College with the early possession. And quickly back to keeper Peter Zafino. You can see the conditions, and we really do want to apologize for some of the conditions and the effect that they will have on uh, the technical end of our broadcast tonight. We're giving you an end zone shot to open the game as we're changing camera positions because of the glare off the field that you can see. Syracuse with possession now, trying to come back. Boston College trying to keep them from getting back. And the Eagles retain possession. We're checking the starting lineups on the field because uh, there were some discrepancies uh, when the coaches, when we talked to the coaches before the game, and uh, in the case of Syracuse, they weren't even 100% sure who was going to start tonight.
That was David Sullivan trying to get in on the break, taking the ball away. Back to Zafino. You can see the rain coming down at Boston College as Chris Pace clears the ball down the far side. Gilligan for Boston College with a foot on the ball. Gilligan with a head on the ball. The only numbers that we can make out for the Syracuse players are the numbers on the backs of their jerseys. So in some cases, if the player is facing our location, it'll be difficult to tell exactly who he is. Well, Scott, as we've seen so far, it's very difficult to control the ball in this type of situation. The astral turf is very wet, very wet, very wet, very slick, and the ball's just taking off. Syracuse in their blue and white striped, bold striped shirts. Clear down the far side. Syracuse retaining possession. Number 24 is a midfielder, Raymond Bruce. Boy, I'm surprised to see players taking such long runs tonight. That was Steve Schaefer. Seemed to me that you'd want to get the ball. Here's Gilligan for Boston College. Gilligan getting it into the area. It's cleared out way up into the rain overhead. Well, Scott, I think Gilligan would have been better off there to take a shot and get a shot on goalie Chris Whitcomb in his wet conditions, try and get a low shot skidding on the turf. It'd be very difficult for the goalkeepers tonight. Syracuse with a long throw in. And here comes Boston College again. That's Sullivan trying to get it in front to Allen. He doesn't get there, but Sullivan gets in on goal, but the shot goes wide. David Sullivan with a nice give and go and working his way back into the area for Boston College. Gave up the ball and then followed it well. We are going to get very wet tonight. Our location is already ringing wet. This is Peter Zafino. He was not in goal for Ben Brewster when we last saw Boston College against the University of Connecticut. The keeper that night was Victor Mercurio. Zafina out of Granby, Connecticut, a former teammate of uh, UConn Husky Mike Tunson. Zafino is a junior. Here come the orange men trying to get a man open in front. They had a man over there. That was Sean Lilly. Unable to get the ball in front on that play, however. The Syracuse throw it. And you can hear the wind whipping around our broadcast location as well. It is a windy night. Cleared away by Manas. Attempting to take it down and failing was Chris Lugosi. Well, Scott, I think every soccer player really enjoys playing in the rain, but I think tonight's a little <laughs> bit too much. Boy, I don't know. I don't think I could enjoy playing this at all. <laughs> I mean, we're comparatively dry compared to these guys. Things falling down around us. Boston College trying to set up the clear. That was Pace. And it'll go out off of Boston College and be a Syracuse throw in. Number four handling the throw in, a junior, Chris Mullen, or Charles Mullen for uh, C uh, Syracuse. Mullen kicks it in front, looking for Lilly, and Lilly breaking in, but it's taken down by Peter Zafino. This is Manis. And Syracuse comes back, chasing the ball for the Orangemen. Scott Oceani, and he's good. And all of a sudden, Breaking right out on top very quickly, less than six minutes into the game. 
Got Oceani and the Syracuse Orange men. Here's Oceani breaking on the sideline. Nice ball given to him. Picks his head up. Makes a nice hard driven cross into the box. In comes the striker and finishes the ball very nicely. It was difficult to see who that was, but you have to guess it was Sean Lilly who plays the center forward position. The target man will get the official scoring on that. A nice setup by Oceani. The time of the goal, 5 minutes, 58 seconds. And Syracuse leads the game 1 to nothing. Nothing goalkeeper Savino, Savino could do on that. That ball just rocketed right by him. The Syracuse numbers are very difficult to pick up, especially in the rain, because there's three single-line stripes. And uh, judging by the position, that was Sean Lilly on the goal with an assist to Oceani, Scott Oceani. Time of the goal again, five minutes, 58 seconds, as Boston College lets the ball go out of bounds and opts for the throw-in. And Syracuse comes back with possession. It was Mark DeMonte on the goal, number 17. So Oceani to DeMonte for the one to nothing Syracuse lead. This is Jeff Monis for Boston College trying to go wide into the corner. And he gets it up in front, but it's cleared away nicely. As Jeff we, Silver on the clear on that play. As we said in the pregame, so Scott, very important for Mark DeMone to produce goals for Syracuse, and he's done it so today, very early. I'm sure Coach Tim Hankins is very pleased right now. I'm sure he's very wet, too, just like we are. Now it's blowing right in our faces. I don't know how these players can manage the it is getting absolutely raw now the conditions are just unbelievable and I'll tell you there was a uh, game two weeks ago a tournament game at Hartford where the referee let play start 25 minutes into the game he just said this is ridiculous there was no tournament champion declared at the University of Hartford they called the game and everybody involved agreed it was a wise decision on the part of the referee. A referee for tonight's game, Steve Grossman. He's from New Hampshire. The linesman, Frank Scarcella from Needham, Mass. And uh, Dilva De Placido out of Marlboro, Massachusetts. Syracuse on the clear and trying to get something started downfield. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Boston College. Handling the throw in. Mark Egan. Egan's a junior from Wellesley, Mass. He teamed up with uh, Barry Dugan from Boston University a few years back in high school. And this is Pat Sullivan with a throw in. Working around to the corner, trying to get something going, and it's cleared away by Syracuse. Well, this guy looks like a monsoon out there right now. Well, I'll tell you, if that. <laughs> Just at that particular moment when Chris Lugosi got the ball in the corner for Boston College, a tarp blew right in front of our location. And we almost, it's a good thing we have monitors. At least we could see. The rain just pelting down now as Jeff Monis gets it into Gilligan. And it's cleared away by the Orange men. A foot race downfield. Boston College wins it with the clear. Peter Zafino. Walking around in water now, literally. Feeds it out to Chris Pace. Pace with a long downfield clear, and it goes out of bounds off ahead. Syracuse with the throw in. With these field conditions, Scott, it's going to be very difficult for the teams to control the ball. I think we're going to see a lot of teams, both teams, BC and Syracuse, play the ball over the top and just hope for a breakaway. Oh, a takedown from behind. Andreas Montvillis, Andreas Montvillis, with the takedown for Syracuse. Syracuse looking for the setup to Oceani in front. Oceani unable to maintain control in the rain, and it's cleared away by Boston College. It'll go out of bounds. And it could very well have gone off an orange man. It did. Hey, you can see that there are hearty souls in the Chestnut Hill area. They obviously love their soccer. 
And another takedown, a sliding takedown on the far side of the field as the footing is really beginning to get treacherous. And a throw in for Syracuse. Well, Scott, when, when AstroTurf gets as wet as it is tonight, the players can just slide and keep sliding and they won't get injured. It's just like sliding across an ice-tight surface. You know, we mentioned that uh, the coaches in some cases weren't 100% sure they're starting lineups and we talked to them before the game and I picked out one change in the Boston College starting lineup. There was a number out there that I didn't have on my lineup and that would be Stu Talmadge who started tonight for the Eagles, was enlisted and a shot goes wide. Talmadge was not a listed uh, starter, but the sophomore is in the starting backfield for the Eagles tonight. We have played 11 and a half minutes of the first half in a driving rain, and Syracuse has taken the lead one to nothing on a goal by Mark DeMonte just under six minutes in. And this will be Oceani on the corner kick. Gets it in front, not much on it, and it's cleared out by the Eagles. Another corner kick for Oceani. It's a very smart play there by Oceani. He realized how wet it is. You're just trying to hit a driven ball to skip up into the middle hoping a Syracuse player could come and knock it in. And we'll see if Mark DeMonte breaks into the area. Here he comes. And we'll get another setup. Now DeMonte's going to come over and have a word with Oceani. There you see the time. 32-40 to play in the first half. One to nothing Syracuse. David Sullivan playing in front of the kick. Oceani puts it up, and Sullivan again boots it away. Down to Sullivan, back to Oceani. Oceani tries to get it back in front. DeMonte comes in on it and sliding in to pull it down. Peter Zafino. Nice speed play out there. the pace. Nice play there by Zafino. It's very wet. The ball almost skipped by him. Made a very nice save. Well, you know, I have to believe if he stays on his feet, he, he is in more danger of sliding away from the ball, losing his footing. If he slides into it, at least he's pretty sure he's going to be there. That's why it's very important for players, whenever they have an opening, to shoot the ball tonight. The goalkeeper's going to have a very tough time getting to the ball. And again, it goes in front wide, and again, Zafino picks it up. Manas being ridden by Oceani. Manas now gets back to the midfield area where it hits the referee. Play in front. That was Arab Arsamian clearing it out, and we have a takedown and a hold called on Boston College. Chris Lugosi with the hold. And the free kick now set up, and you can see how wet the shirt of Scott Oceani is. He is drenched. And it ain't going to get any drier, Scott. He takes the kick up in front. Syracuse getting ahead on it, but it's cleared back out where Allen boots it away. This is Greg Schwakey with the ball for Boston College. He's almost ridden off of it, but a kick awarded to BC. And there you see an example of the footing. The eagle on the turf was David Sullivan. Syracuse just does not want to give BC any space. They know how treacherous the footing is. They don't even want BC to get any shots on their goalkeeper, Chris Whitcomb. This is Pace putting it up in front. Nobody able to get ahead on it, and it goes wide left. Goal kick for Boston College. Or for Syracuse, excuse me. Chris Whitcomb, the keeper for Syracuse, he's a junior. Whitcomb, Whitcomb out of Cape Elizabeth, New Jersey. Chris Pace with the ball for the Eagles. And he goes downfield. He had Barsamian open to the outside, but elected to go downfield with the ball. And now Syracuse will try to set something up. Oceani putting it up in front. 
Unable to get there. Well, actually, the feed was just too long for Sean Lilly. And a goal kick for Boston College. <laughs> Are you soaked there, Swanee, or what? <laughs> I'm soaked right now, Scott. <laughs> Did you ever play in, in weather just like this? Uh, we played St. Francis last year in a, in a downpour similar to this. And uh, if the rain's cold, it's not fun. If the rain's warm, it's fun. You can slide around recklessly. Here comes Schwakey feeding it in front. Allen trying to get a foot on it. Taken away, and the Syracuse Orange men clear it back. We have a whistle. I believe the ref has called a penalty kick on the Syracuse Orange He's men. pointing to a penalty kick. And I'm trying, it looks like, uh, well, he's got Oceani with him, but I don't think it was Oceani on the foul. He whistled the penalty kick for elbowing. Now, is it, was the uh, player who was, uh, who the infraction was made on must have been Ken Allen as he tried to get a foot on the ball in front. The play in the area, so the Eagles get a, uh, get a penalty kick. And it'll be Jeff Monis doing the honors. A test now for Chris Whitcomb in goal for Syracuse. Not only are the conditions tough for goalkeeper Chris Whitcomb, it's also tough for the shooter, Scott. And he hits the corner. That's good. Monis hits the corner. The time, 17 minutes, or make that 16 minutes and 18 seconds. And Chris Whitcomb dives to the right side, but Monis was able to pick his corner and hit it home. Jeff Monis on a penalty kick. Here's Monis approaching the ball. Just places the ball very nicely. Right, Whitcomb almost made a nice save, but Monis really placed the ball well. Took the penalty kick very well. Well, I'll tell you, with how slick that ball is and how slick the field is, he's got to worry about his footing, and he's got to worry about getting a good direct hit on the ball, and he did very, very well. And this ball will, may not go out. It does. It goes over the end line. Zafino just let it get there, but I thought it might get held up in the water. We'll see balls stay in bounds tonight, Gary. Gary, um, we're going to set up top three again. You can point out how the way, the way Wickham gets right, that he still couldn't reach it. You want to read that again, but it's, it's set up very early. Stand by. Stand by. Here are the orange men trying to get in on goal. Good defense on this particular sequence by the Eagles as they force the orange back into their own end. Gilligan heads the ball to the outside, but here comes, well, that must have been DeMonte. Again, we're having trouble picking up the numbers. This is Monis, the man who just scored for Boston College trying to control the ball. He's taken down from behind by number 24, Raymond Bruce. Bruce, just a freshman. Gary, I wanted to ask you, that game that you played against St. Francis, was that at Nickerson Field on the turf? Yes, it was at Nickerson Field last year, and it was cold. It was in November, so it wasn't fun. The feed in by Oceani, almost taken down dangerously, but Ken Allen clears it away, gets it to Sullivan. Here's the penalty kick again by Monis. Now, goalkeeper Chris Whitcomb is going to dive the right way, but Monis places the ball nicely into the corner, just out of the reach of Whitcomb. Very nice penalty. Notice how he swerved the ball away from the goalkeeper. That, that really enabled it to get into the back of the net. So effective if you can pick your corner and find it. We saw two fellas do that in the BU-UConn game. Once again, Scott, we've seen four penalty kicks this year, and each time the kicker just placed the ball nicely. He didn't try and blast it by the goalie. He just placed it into the side netting. Syracuse again unable to get into the Boston College area. David Sullivan comes away with it for the Eagles. And a race down the outside, but it's cleared away by Syracuse before Greg Schwakey could get to it. Barsamian loses the ball. Back to Pace. Pace will let it go. Zafino will pick it up. Believe it or not, these are not the worst weather conditions I have ever broadcast in, Gary. Uh, you must be talking about the Big East tournament last year, Scott. 
No, I'm no. thinking of a UConn Maine football game, which was played in an absolute uh, monsoon with the rain blowing straight into our faces for the whole game. That was beautiful. <laughs> Chris Pace will trigger the action for Boston College. He'll try to get it up in front. Trying to get a foot on it with Swakey. Cleared away by Syracuse. And out of bounds. It'll go back the Eagles' way. Barsamian with the throw in. And lost out of bounds. You can hear the rain driving down. You can hear it in the background, see it in the foreground. Long run by Monis down the near sideline. Swakey clears it back. It's picked up by Gilligan. This is Lugosi. And he loses it out of bounds. That's a look at the field that these players are playing soccer on. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Looks more like a lake than a field, Scott. <laughs> we just saw one of the linesmen walking around in the puddles. And this will be another throw in for Syracuse. Number nine handling the triggering chores is Sean Lilly. And here comes Ken Allen for Boston College uh, to Sullivan and Sullivan can't hold it in. Back to keeper Chris Whitcomb. Whitcomb letting the defense set up in front of him, and he's going to kick it out. Syracuse loses it out. It'll be a throw-in for Boston College. Number 13 on the throw-in, Tom Scrivener. Scrivener, a junior midfielder out of Georgetown Prep in Washington, D.C. Weak kick toward the goal, but score! Score that one for Syracuse. Sean Lilly, very opportunistic, as a weak kick managed to filter through. And as Peter Zafino came out to play it, he beat the defense in front of him. Sean Lilly makes it 2 nothing Syracuse. It's a Syracuse play, just trying a shot. Lilly, very opportunistic, comes in. Feeds goalkeeper Zafino to the goal and places it into the side of the net. Boy, Lilly looked like he literally slid into that ball. He beat Zafino in a sliding match, and Zafino is still down on the field. He's being attended to as he and Lilly both went after the ball. They both went in the same fashion, sliding into the ball. And uh, it was just that sliding thrust, getting his foot on it, that well, gave Lilly the goal. The referee could have almost called a foul on Lilly there, Scott. It's very dangerous when you slide into the goalkeeper. And right now we're seeing Zafino injured by the sliding play of Lilly. Standing over him now, kneeling down, is head coach Ben Brewster. Let's see if we can pick up where Zafino is injured. Here's a shot. Here Lilly comes in. Very opportunistic. Nice hustle by Lilly. Slides in. Well, I, you know, I, I think that uh, the referee showed great restraint in not calling a foul because it's very clear that uh, Lilly was there ahead of Zafino and really put the ball under Zafino before he even hit the ground. The time of the goal, as I'm standing here, <laughs> boy, I'm standing in a lake here. This is unbelievable. The time of the goal is 21 minutes and 46 seconds. Sean Lilly. And now we have a two to one game. Syracuse over Boston College. And Peter Zafino still down on the field. While they tend to Peter Zafino, we'll remind you that the score is Syracuse 2, Boston College 1. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. It's more over the past few years than tennis. It's more colorful, competitive, and controversial than ever. Tennis Magazine delivers all the action. 
turn to action at Boston College, you can see goalkeeper Peter Zafino being carried to the Boston College bench. So we are going to have a change in goal for the Eagles. And this will bring the fellow in that we saw against UConn last week as we look at Ben Brewster on the sideline conferring with Chris Pace. The keeper being warmed up now, Victor Mercurio. Mercurio played a very good game, I thought, against UConn last week. He gave up three goals in the first half, but settled down nicely as Boston College got back into the game at 3-1. But that was where it ended as the Huskies managed to pick up the tempo again late in the game. And, uh, of course, in the background, the ever-present rain. Gary, a new keeper coming into a situation like this. He's been relatively comfortable in his rain gear sitting on the bench and uh, figuring he was going to watch himself a soccer game tonight. This has got to be a difficult situation for him. Well, Scott, you're right. He's got to be a little bit cold. His mind might not be there psychologically. He might not be there altogether psychologically. He might not be game ready, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. So it's very difficult for a goalkeeper to come off the bench cold. Well, in a situation like this where Ben Brewster, of course, you know, you played with a, a keeper who was in there night after night after night in uh, John Moe, but I'm just kind of wondering in a situation like this with Ben Brewster where he has been alternating his keepers, how soon before the game the uh, keeper was uh, selected or knew he was going to start. It can also be tough for the back, Scott. One goalkeeper might be better in the air than the other. One goalkeeper might like to get the ball back past him. The other one might not. So it could be a difficult transition. It'll interrupt the rhythm for the whole team, possibly. And uh, I guess just to get him the, the feel of the ball, they feed it back to him quickly. We have 23 minutes to play in the first half in a driving rain at Boston College. And Syracuse leads Boston College 2-1. to one. Just a few moments ago, the play leading to the injury to keeper Peter Zafino as we have a takedown in midfield. Play on as Syracuse maintains possession. Ken Allen trying to come up with the strip. Gets it back to Barsamian, to Manis. Manis ridden by Oceani. The ball stays in bounds as you see the water holding it in, and Manis picks it up again. Now he's taken down. This will not be play on. This will be a free kick for Boston College. There is your injured keeper, Peter Zafino, as they check out his legs. Trying to make a sliding block on the play by Sean Lilly. That goal by Lilly giving Syracuse a two to one lead. This is Chris Pace, clears it back to Mercurio. <laughs> he bounced it on water that time. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear the wind whipping up now. It's really going to have an effect on play as the water is now, as you see. Pace getting back to try to clear it out. He gets it off a Syracuse player. It'll be a goal kick for Boston College. Substitute coming into the game for Boston College. Going off the field is Ken Allen. Coming in for the Eagles is Greg O'Brien. And a switch of assignments now for the Eagles. Manis clears it back. The Orange men will clear it out. No playing it back to the keeper on that one. Playing it back to the keeper tonight, Gary, could be real dangerous because you don't know what the ball's going to do in that water. Good point, Scott. There could be a big puddle right in front of the goalkeeper, and if the forwards are hustling, they might find themselves a very easy goal. So a very determined play that time by the Orange men to clear the ball back out instead of letting it get in on goal. Trying to get it in front, looking for a header. The Orange men keep it alive. It's cleared away by Pace, but here come the Orange again. Now Gilligan trying to clear it away out in front. This is Swakey. Swakey keeps it in. Number 14 for Syracuse, David Crouch. He was not in the starting lineup tonight. Crouch tries to clear it in front. Jeff Silver clears it out of bounds. Boston College gets the throw in.
Tim Hankinson, the head coach at Syracuse University. Hankinson taking his team to the Big East final last season. Where they lost to a very tough Seton Hall team. Barsamian with the throw in. Syracuse is using the field very wisely, Scott. Their outside midfields are staying wide, and the backs are getting it to them very nicely. Just trying to spread Boston College out. The field is very narrow, similar to Nicholson Field for BU, and the players have to stay wide. It's going to be too congested in the middle of the field. You're watching our uh, camera angle from the end zone. As you can see it, as Syracuse almost gets something going in front, and again, almost something in front, the target man on that play, David Crouch, he set, he set up housekeeping directly in front of the net, and twice the orange men almost managed to get something into him. So I mentioned we were watching a lot of end zone uh, camera angles tonight because at midfield with the water on the field, and the glare of the lights, you can just see silhouettes. I can tell you that because that's the angle we have here when we're looking down at midfield. If we sometimes appear to be having trouble picking up the players, that's because we're having trouble picking up the players. There are occasions when there's nothing but silhouettes in front of us, as you can see. Look at that angle. That is a water surface reflecting lights. Mercurio having trouble keeping that ball from uh, moving away. That makes it pretty difficult to control as the Orange come back again and shoot it wide. Here's Syracuse looking very dangerous on the attack. Nice through ball, nice run by the Syracuse striker, DeMonte, I believe. Nice hard cross in front of the goal. And here comes the Syracuse player with time. He shoots the ball into this BC defense. And right up, uh, set up in front there, you saw David Crouch, number 14 for Syracuse. He just uh, found himself a spot there and stayed there and was a very dangerous man for Mercurio to have to deal with. We have 17 minutes to play in the first half at Boston College's Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill. Syracuse leading 2-1. to one. A very important game for both teams as both teams are below 500. A win tonight would put uh, Syracuse at 500 at 3-3. Three and three. Boston College at 0-4-1 looking for its first win of the year. But this would be a good one for both teams as the fans try to stay dry as uh, best they can. Hey, you know what? We've just been uh, informed that that is the mother of Chris Whitcomb, the goalkeeper for Syracuse. And uh, she is one hearty supporter of her son to come all the way to Boston College to watch him play and do so in the rain. We now have Randy Desdoon in the game for Syracuse along with William Younger. As the Eagles try to set something up in front. And we'll get a corner kick. And now they'll really try to set something up in front. Out in front for the Eagles. Possible target man, Barsamian, trying to get into the area. He tries to get a head up on it. Syracuse clears it out. Lugosi picks it up for Boston College. Tricky dribbles around the sideline. Again, he tricky dribbles, and he still works it into the area. Over to the corner to Monis. Monis gets it in front, cleared out by Syracuse. Did you Scott. believe I just did that? <laughs> Scott Gray's one dedicated announcer just went out in the rain to call that play. We can't see the corner of the field here. This will be a throw in for Boston College. Again, looking for somebody up front. That's Ken Allen, but it's kicked out again by Syracuse. This should be a corner kick for the Eagles. Well, it's a throw in. Now we have a BC corner kick. And let's see who they try to set up in front. 
to play it to. Lugosi set up in front. Allen looking like he might be ready to break in. And it's cleared off the head of David Sullivan. Kept in in the corner. Here's Monis beating it up in front looking for Sullivan. Sullivan unable to get to it, and it goes out of bounds. Allen will throw it in. There you have the situation here in the first half. 14-20 to play. 2-1 to one Syracuse as Monis again tries to get it around in front of the goal. Unable to do so. And it'll be a goal kick for Syracuse. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by Boston College solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and Boston College is prohibited. Play on at midfield. And again, we're looking at silhouettes as Syracuse tries to break down. In front, cleared back to the corner and out. That should be out over the end and a goal kick or a corner kick. Boston College coach Ben Brewster concerned about the conditions, concerned about trailing two to one and concerned, I am sure, about the condition of his starting goal goalkeeper, Peter Zafino. We see the uh, goal kick or the corner kick being set up. Bringing it out and feeding it in on goal, number 20 for Syracuse, Steve Schaefer. And a high, wide shot. And a goal kick for Boston College. And more of the crowd. You can see how the water is just pouring here. And actually, you know, I say more of the crowd. There are a lot of people standing up underneath the uh, overhang up and back. So there are some people here. But boy, the ones you got to take your hats off to are the ones sitting right out there in the stands under the umbrellas. A dedicated soccer fan. This is a raw night. Ken Allen heads the ball out of bounds. Needs more Irish There you see some of the fans sitting up under the over overhang trying to keep dry. I think they found the best place in the stadium right now. <laughs> Allen trying to clear it for Boston College, and he gets it off a Syracuse player. I believe that was Crouch. Monis with the throw in. And in on goal. Boy, that would just slip right by Chris Pace, but Mercurio was there to pick it up. That's the kind of shot I was talking about, Scott. Keeping the shot low on the ground, the ball just skip off the turf and be very difficult for the goalkeepers. Mercurio had a tough time with that shot. That was number 13, William Younger, one of the substitutes we just mentioned coming into the game for Syracuse, who took the shot. Looked like Pace might have had, a, had a, his keeper screened here, Gary. I think Pace had the keeper screened, but Pace, I think McCurry was a little bit surprised by the, 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 how much the ball took up speed once it hit the ground. I'll tell you, when the Astro turf's wet, the ball just takes off when it's a low shot. Boy, that really did. It skipped like a rock off the water and in on goal. McCurry did a good job, though. He's, he, kept the, he got his body underneath the ball so it couldn't skip by him. It went, it deflected off his chest and went back onto the field of play, but he was not going to let the ball get by him. Well, now we have another goal kick for Syracuse. We have exactly 11 minutes to play in the first half. 2-1 Syracuse over Boston College. And the Eagles now trying to set something up. Pat Sullivan, he has it taken away. And now it's Syracuse coming the other way. Riding him hard is Gilligan. That was Pace, clearing the ball out. Syracuse player needed for the throw in. William Younger. And Younger passes the honors off to Steve Schaefer. Bowing to experience in this case. That's Younger shooting it wide with his left foot. Well, Younger has only been in the game about five minutes, Gary, and already he's taken a couple of shots on goal. One of them pretty dangerous. He's making his presence felt out there very quickly, Scott. I'm sure Tim Hankinson is pleased with his play this far. Just a freshman. This is Sullivan, unable to get to the ball as it's cleared out by Syracuse. It'll be a throw in for Boston College. Lugosi will handle it. 
Lugosi gets it ahead to Monis, who's taken down from behind, and we get a whistle. That was Younger with a takedown. Very aggressive freshman in here tonight. And we get the direct for Boston College. Up and over and headed back out. Pace back for Boston College. He's going to bow to his keeper, and that was a good move on Pace's part. He had a cutter charging right in on him, David Crouch. Crouch also has shown himself to be dangerous tonight in his positioning. Bonas now throwing it in. Looking for Lugosi. Lugosi far right gets it into the area. Syracuse picks it up and uh, kicks it out. It'll be a throw in for Boston College at that point with David Sullivan setting it up. Lugosi back to Sullivan. Sullivan now out to the corner of the area and he kicks it in on goal, headed out. Headed over the end line, a corner kick for Boston College. was a nice move there by Sullivan, but we see Syracuse has 10 players back defensively. It's going to be tough for BC to score here. Well, they've got Greg O'Brien set up in front of the net. Wakey moving in as Barsamian does also, but it's cleared back out by Syracuse. Back to the corner to Sullivan. Or no, that's Sullivan in front. This is Gilligan trying to shoot it in, and it's cleared back out. And the shot goes wide. Are they getting wet? Yeah. It certainly looks like they're getting wet. Not even a night you just want to sit on the bench and watch the play. Whitcomb clears it out to the far side. Seven and a half left. Seven and a half minutes left in the first half. 2-1 Syracuse. The game coming to you from Boston College. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. And Boston College with a free kick for Jeff Monis. Monis takes it, puts it up in front, looks for Barsamian's head, and it goes off the head of O'Brien. Well, Syracuse did a poor marking job there, Scott. We saw Barsamian come out of his back position. He was wide open there for the head shot. He just couldn't get it on goal. Boy, you were right about that. Not only was he wide open, but it actually got through to the head of O'Brien, so there were two guys who had a legitimate chance, unmarked, to put that one in goal. Keeping it in, Syracuse coming back. Boston College now back the other way for Syracuse. Pace will pick it up for the Eagles. Here's, here's the cross by Monis. It's a nice... These two people running far post. It's a nice lofted ball to the far post. Here comes Barsimian and O'Brien. Wide open right there. If he, perhaps if there was communication, he could have let it go to the outside guy who would have had a better opportunity to head the ball. But in any case, both of them were wide open for the headshot. You saw as Barsamian went up, there was nobody at all marking him. And a takedown from behind. Greg Schwakey doing the takedown. Well, now they say Schwakey was the takedown E. So Boston College comes back the other way, getting it into the corner, trying to work it in front. Nothing doing there. Syracuse comes back. Here's Younger off his head, trying to move it ahead, and he does. That's Crouch for Syracuse. A lot of players in right now for Syracuse that did not start the game. Number four was a starter, Charles Mullen. Oh, and a takeaway. That was O'Brien on the takeaway. As again, we're having trouble picking up the numbers. This is Schwakey. Schwakey gets it into the area for Boston College, and it goes out over the end line. It was a nice hustle there by Schwakey, but I think it would have been better to go on more direct angle to goal, Scott. He seemed to have a little bit of space. I think he should, under these conditions, I think he should have tried to get a shot on goal. It would be very difficult for Whitcomb to hold on to it. You know what would make a nice feature? We should have somebody up here in the booth doing play-by-play -play of our play-by-play -play of the game. 
There you have it, New England Sports Network. We do deliver in all kinds of weather under any conditions. Looks like the sign got ripped there with these uh, windy conditions. Boy, and the wind, the rain and the wind have both picked up considerably since the start of the game as we have four and a half minutes left in the first half. Syracuse with a two to one lead in a very important game from the standpoint of Syracuse wanting to get back to 500. <laughs> Boston College wanting that first win and neither team wanting to dig itself into a Big East hole. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a Boston College throw in. Also, both teams are 0-1 in the Big East Conference right now. And to qualify for the tournament, they both need to win today. Could be early Big East elimination for one of these clubs tonight. Clear all the way back to the keeper. Mercurio holding it in with his feet. Far sideline, it goes off of Syracuse. Throw in for the Eagles. Looking for Monis down the sideline, overthrowing Monis. Sullivan tries to pick it up. It goes out of bounds. Say again? Are you serious? Sure, I'll get you. Well, the referee's going to let BC throw the ball in again because the linesman felt that the ball didn't cross the line and go back out of bounds, so it's BC's throwing again. This time, it goes out off of Monis, so it will be Syracuse ball. And again off of Monis. Charles Mullen throwing it in for Syracuse. Looking for the long throw in down the sideline. He had a man open but unable to control it was Jeff Silver. Hey, it says Temple on the scoreboard. That was a football game that was played here once upon a time. It is not Temple, it is Syracuse 2, Boston College 1. Boston College with a throw in for Jeff Monis, or the uh, direct, excuse me. And a lot of activity in front of the area as Monis puts it up, but it's headed away by Syracuse. Barsamian tries to get it in on goal and kicks it wide. It was a nice effort there by, by Arsimi and hoping to catch the goalkeeper napping a little bit, hitting a first-time volley right out of the air. <laughs> I can't believe somebody needs a drink tonight. <laughs> if you do, just lay the cup out there and let it fill itself up. <laughs> yeah, I think you need some coffee or tea out there instead of water and uh, Gatorade. <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you, this is real Gator weather for sure, not Gatorade. Boston College throw-in. Here's Barsamian. Trying to get it up in front of the area. Cleared out of the area. Now Sullivan trying to get it back in. A header by Gilligan. And Gilligan trying to get his head up again. Gilligan kicking it up in the air and it goes out of bounds. It'll be a Boston College throw in. We're approaching the one minute mark to play as Barsamian throws it in for Monis. Monis tied up trying to get it into the area. Tries to get back out to Barsamian. He's taken down. No whistle. Play on. We have exactly one minute to play. Syracuse won. Boston College with Sullivan in front trying to get something set up. But right out is Chris Whitcomb to hold it down. Now we have 50 seconds left in the first half. Two to one Syracuse. That was good anticipation there by Sullivan, but he would have been done better to use his left foot and get the ball across. I know he's a right-footed player, but sometimes you have to use your opposite foot, Scott. Number 12, Chris Lugosi. And the kick for Boston College. Lugosi puts it up or tries to put it up in front. It deflects right off a Syracuse player back to the keeper. Ten seconds now in the first half. And Whitcomb may just uh, let this one play itself out. And go to the locker room where he can get dry with a two-to-one lead. Four, three, two, one. That's the end of the first half. At Alumni Stadium at Boston College, the Boston College Eagles find themselves trailing in an important Big East game for them, 2-1 to, to Syracuse. Gary, when you consider the conditions, 
that you were looking at coming into this game, I kind of feel that you got to think these two teams did pretty well for themselves in the first half. I'll tell you, we've seen a pretty good first half considering the conditions, Scott. Uh, Syracuse is playing very smartly, I believe, on defense they're getting 10 or 11 players back, making it very difficult for BC to get a clean shot in on net. Well, Boston College, as uh, Gary pointed out, being bottled up a little bit defensively. Their one goal coming on a uh, penalty kick. And as we stand at halftime, it's Syracuse 2, Boston College 1. We'll be back with the second half after these messages. Hill, Massachusetts. We are just about to start the second half between Syracuse and Boston College. Syracuse with a 2-1 to one lead, and you can see that the Boston College Eagles have changed their jerseys and are now wearing their dark road uniforms. I'm just going to hope that, uh, well, here Boston College tries to get an early opportunity on goal. Taken down after taking the shot, Greg O'Brien. I was just about to say that would be O'Brien number 16, so I just uh, hope that everybody put on their proper number. There's Tim Hankinson. If he looks wet, believe me, he is, and he was asked as Boston College again tries to come back and a wide shot. That was Sullivan with the shot. At halftime, the referee asked Hankinson if he wanted to continue. He said, well, we're really pretty wet right now. We aren't going to get any wetter, so we might as well complete this game. And uh, I'm not sure what would happen at this point. Uh, if the game could, would be completely scrapped or if uh, Syracuse would be awarded uh, a win by virtue of 2-1. to one. O'Brien with a shot wide. Oh! In the back it's of the in net. the back of the net. It looked like it went wide as the keeper, Mercurio, went out to play it wide. That's Whitcomb in goal. That's, That's Syracuse right, Excuse goal. me, Whitcomb in goal. As Whitcomb went out to play it wide, he overran the ball. That's why I thought it had gone wide. He just overran the ball, and it actually went in behind him. And here's O'Brien with a shot. As I was saying, you have to shoot the ball and you get anywhere within 35 yards because of the conditions. O'Brien uncorks a great shot that beats Whitcomb. Right to the side of the net. I think Whitcomb thought it was wide. He was fooled. He really was. He was like me. It looked like it was going to go wide, and it just found the side of the net. What a shot by O'Brien as he top-footed it with his left foot. And that ties the score at two. Greg O'Brien scoring for Boston College. We have a two-all tie. Gary, I was talking about a UConn-Maine football game. Scratch that. These are the worst conditions I have ever broadcast under. There is no place in Alumni Stadium where you are going to be able to stay dry right now. And uh, I just hope we don't have overtime, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I hope, certainly hope not, Scott. We have 43 minutes to play in regulation with a two-all tie. Syracuse now on the attack and sliding out of bounds. The three players on your screen for Boston College, number three, Ken Keyes, number four, Eric Barsamian, speaking number of, two, Jeff Monis. Speaking of UConn, number two, Jeff Monis played with UConn's number two, Todd D'Alessandro at Farmington High School in Connecticut. And that was Keyes off the feed from Monis trying to get it in. Allen will chase it, but it'll go out of bounds. Allen's with the throw in. Up in front looking for Keyes. He's unable to get it. And nothing but blue and white striped orange men. Keys throwing it in again. That was Tom Scrivener that he was trying to connect with, unable to do so. And Sullivan prevented from getting a head up on the ball. And here comes Syracuse on the setup. Up in front, this is Keyes trying to find some room, but he's unable to clear it in. He's taken down from behind by Jeff Silver. That was a very rough tackle by Jeff Silver from behind. Give and we're going to get a card on this play for Silver. And rightly so. That was, there's no need for that fall. Uh, 
Barsamian will be setting up as soon as uh, play is back in. 31-52 on the scoreboard clock. In front looking for keys and it goes up and out. That was into a, the stand. That was a great cross there by Barsamian. They're using the field conditions now, Scott. He skipped that ball in hoping it would deflect off a BC player, even a Syracuse player, into the back of the net. And the setup in front. Looking for O'Brien. He was too wide. Syracuse clears it away. It'll go back out of bounds. And we'll get another throw in. Got a Syracuse player down. I believe they got hit by the shot. There was a pile up in front of the net. Could have got kicked in the pile up as well. And we cannot make out the number. Oh, now we can. That's Silver down. That's Jeff Silver. Silver, a freshman defender out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We attended East Central Bucks High School. As we look at Ben Brewster, wet, but still enthusiastic. Allen with a throw in on the far side. Headed off of a Syracuse defender and coming back in Syracuse's direction. Picked up in midfield and uh, Boston College now tries to bring it back. We're tied at two as Sullivan will try to break that tie. He tried to fire it, but misfired when he was hit from behind. And we'll get the goal kick. Oh, and a break by Syracuse. The shot on goal. It's knocked down, but not controlled by Mercurio. The Orange men will try again. Had an excellent opportunity there, splitting the defense and trying again. DeMonte in there. This time, Mercurio picks it up right in front of DeMonte. Mercurio's made some fine saves tonight, Scott, despite these field conditions. He's having difficulty holding on to the ball, though. And if the Syracuse forward hustled in there, he might have had himself an opportunistic goal. Boy, one of those bad rebounds that came out right in front. And fortunately for Mercurio, he had a defender home. This is Monin. You can see the water pelting down on the field. It has been like this for the entire game. Clear into the keeper. Number three on your screen for Syracuse is Mark Fish. Keeper, of course, is Chris Whitcomb. Fish, a freshman defender out of Rochester, New York, and Fairport High School. A very young team here for Syracuse. Tim Hankinson building for the future. Throw in for Syracuse. Hey, we're number one, too. How you doing? And a long shot in. This goes wide. That was taken from way out of Never Never Land. Calling the defense back. The Syracuse corner kick. It's important that both teams keep generating shots because in these conditions, one of them is bound to find its way through. Let's see if they try to set somebody up in front or if they go with the outside feed again. We'll look for a cutter in front. We'll look for number 17. They might try to get the Monty in there, and they do. But it goes over everything and outside, bounces in the water, and here comes Boston College. Double team by Syracuse. Boston College will get the get to keep possession. Really have to apologize. The Syracuse numbers are difficult to pick up because of the way they are. Uh, pattern on the backs of the jerseys. They're single line numbers, three orange lines. Very difficult to see, and I'm trying to keep track through foggy glasses. We have a break on goal. 
Ken Keyes gets a foot on it and tries to put it over the keeper, Chris Whitcomb, but it goes wide. Well, Scott, I think Whitcomb made a bad decision there coming off his line. If Keyes just got the ball a little lower, he would have found himself a goal. It's very important for goalkeepers, once they leave that line, they have to get the ball. If they don't get the ball, it's an open net situation. And here's the cross. And here's the shot. Wickham's off his line. It's just the BC player got the ball on net. He had himself a goal. Sometimes the keeper really doesn't intend to do that, but he gets out so far that, well, he just keeps coming. This is Whitcomb now, and you can see the ball having his problems traveling a straight line and getting off a good pass. We saw a good example right there. You get that ball slowly moving through the water. And an opportunistic player for the other team might try to take advantage. You have to be very sure of your passes tonight. Bicycle kick, a half bicycle into the area, but nothing doing. Chris Pace clears it away, and it'll come back in Boston College's direction. The referee called a dangerous play. There's a BC defender right there. It's a dangerous play when you when you leave your feet and try a bicycle kick, and if there's a defender there, it's a dangerous play. Number five on your screen, Ken Allen, back for Boston College. Oh, that one almost got away from Whitcomb, but it would have been wide anyway, but just a good example there of how difficult it is for the keeper to control the ball and maintain his footing all at the same time. I can't emphasize too much how important it is to keep shooting the ball, Scott. We saw that how much Whitcomb had right there with a shot from way outside. So, you know, you got two teams trying to win here, and we got a kick in in front. Boston College trying to get a foot on it, and it goes in, Whitcomb kicks it out. Off of Whitcomb again, and a defender manages to kick it out. Whitcomb got in the way of that more than saved it, and making the kick save on the defense, Andreas Montvila. And now another feed in front of the area, this time a head ball out. Whitcomb has been caught a couple of times on two of those saves in there. He just managed to be in the way of the ball. He just happened to be in the way of the ball. He was not in good position. He was down and sprawling in the water. Fortunately, as Whitcomb now comes out and makes another save. This time going down in front of a shot by Pat Sullivan, I believe. BC is putting a lot of pressure on the Syracuse right defense right now, and they're not responding well. Although the defenders are hustling, they're getting into the goal. The defenders did save two shots that beat goalkeeper Chris Whitcomb. That was Sullivan on the shot that Whitcomb just saved out of the corner. And Boston College really putting on some pressure now. He's unable to get it back into the area. Looking ahead to Lugosi. And the ball will go, no. Yes, it did go out of bounds. Here's Sullivan. Here's Sullivan breaking through. Just has goalkeeper Wickham to beat, but Wickham came out well, cut the angle down, and took the shot to the face, which sometimes goalies have to do. Nice Boston sliding. Boston College, a long throw in. Lugosi clears it back to Keys up in front. Sullivan almost got a head on it, almost directed it toward the goal. It goes out of bounds. And it goes back in Syracuse's direction. And you see on the scoreboard, 23 minutes, just over 23 minutes to play in regulation. We're in a two-all tie. Referee tonight, Steve Grossman. This is Lugosi looking ahead, unable to connect with O'Brien. Comes back out for Syracuse. Gilligan will bring it in on the throw-in. And... Lugosi again. 
Faking off the ball. Here comes Syracuse. Lugosi tries to tackle from behind. Ken Allen clears it back to his keeper. And down goes Mercurio as he tries to control the ball, and he does. Lugosi from Boston College to O'Brien. O'Brien leading the charge to Sullivan. Sullivan tried to give a quick go back to O'Brien. Nothing doing there. Cleared away. Trying to pick these players up in midfield is impossible. With the lights glaring off the water as the rain keeps falling, all we see at midfield is silhouettes. That was Pace kicking it back. It's a nice play there by Syracuse. They had the ball on the left side of the field. The midfield player realized there's nothing on, switched the ball to the right side of the field where they had a two versus one on the BC defender. Unfortunately, in these conditions, they couldn't control the ball. Pace kicked it out of bounds, so it's a throw in for Syracuse. Up in front in the area and hauling it down Mercurio. If one of these teams does not score in the next 21 minutes, Gary, we are going to be here for 20 minutes beyond that. Our We're biggest, tied at two. Our biggest fear may come true here, Sky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I enjoy a good soccer game, but I don't think I need an extra 20 minutes tonight. <laughs> I don't think we do. Boston College setting up for the direct. Moving it back, Jeff Monis and Arabar Samian discussing the setup. Lugosi comes back to join them, and Monis takes the kick, tries to put it over to Sullivan, cutting in front. Whitcomb comes out, falls it down, not much pressure there. And no pressure down at this end either. As Mercurio pricks it up and pay, plays it for Boston College. Feudal attempted a long feed to a cutting Sullivan on that play, and Syracuse comes back. And a long shot wide. Goal kick for Boston College. And another fan trying to stay dry. Looks like she's managed to so far tonight. Quite unlike the players on the field, as you can see. Quite unlike us as well, Scott. Quite unlike us as well. I'm coming home soaked tonight. Oh, taken down from behind is O'Brien. Boston College will restart from there. Barsamian sets it up for the direct. Good work there by our cameraman showing how much it is raining there. It's pouring. Boy, this looks like football back in the 30s. And a shot just wide and taken down by Whitcomb. Now in the game for Syracuse, number six, Ralph Pascarella. Ralph, a sophomore midfielder out of Oceanside, New York. This is Whitcomb, as you can see, the rain coming down harder. Right now, it's probably coming down as hard as it has all night. Tell you one thing, they wouldn't play baseball tonight. If the Red Sox were home, the lights at Fenway would be dark. Another important fact we haven't mentioned so far, Scott, is that in this driving rain, the players' jerseys and shoes become very heavy. So near the end of the game, we'll probably see both teams become very tired. Especially Syracuse with the long, long shirts. Those, they must be getting very heavy. You can see those sleeves really hanging down beyond their ankles and beyond their hands, or beyond their wrists and beyond their hands. Syracuse trying to come back now. This is Monis for Boston College. Monis gets through the defense. He'll take the shot. Gets it in, and Whitcomb dives for the save. It's a nice run there by Monis, but 
Uh, I have, I've been stressing the fact that the players need to shoot more, but there I think he would have been better to cross. He had two strikers running through the middle. I think if he crossed the ball, BC might have had a goal. Seventeen and a half minutes to play. In regulation, 2-2, Syracuse and Boston College. Hi. Are you dry? No, neither are we. <laughs> Damani breaks in. He's got Barsamian with him. Gets off a weak shot wide. It goes out over the end line. Now Syracuse saying it went off the keeper, and I think they're right. We should get a corner kick. Let's see if Syracuse does indeed set up for the corner. Yes, they will. And let's see who they try to get in in front. Right now they have nobody in. Damani breaking into the area. Feet out far out in front. And out of bounds. Boston College will throw it in. Down the sideline. Looking for Gilligan. And Allen with the throw in. And the rain comes down even harder, if you can believe it. Right now, I think the BC players want this game a little bit more than the Syracuse players. They seem to be trying a little harder, running more, creating more opportunity. Greg Schwakey with the ball. Pulls up, looks for somebody in front. He finds Monis. Monis back to Schwakey on a short pass. Outside to Barsamian. Barsamian puts it up in front where he tries to find O'Brien. O'Brien taken down. Schwakey loses the ball. It stays in. And this is Lugosi. Lugosi will try to get it into the area. Headed back out. I thought we had a handball. No call. It goes out of bounds. I wonder what the visibility of the referee is like down on the field. He has that rain right in his face. Again, Gary, as you mentioned, Boston College really marking very tightly, looking like they want this one a little bit more now, maybe. Schwakey taken down from behind. Boston College gets the restart. <laughs> well, at least the drains on the field are working. <laughs> we have a drain up here, too. Somebody marked a five-inch hole right in between us here, Gary. That's so we won't step in it, I guess. <laughs> Feet in front. Keys gets a foot on it. Back outside where it's being played by Schwakey. Schwakey keeps it in. Unable to turn the corner, however, and get it back into the area. He's joined by Lugosi, and it goes out of bounds. 14 minutes to play in the second half. 14 minutes left in regulation. We're tied at two, Boston College and Syracuse. We might be in here for a long haul. We could have another 20 minutes if somebody doesn't score. Of all the nights to get overtime, Gary. Well, Scott, I hope that uh, at the end of 90 minutes, if it is still scored, both coaches will be sensible enough to be happy with the tie. Then take the tie in and let's go home. Because at this point, it's really getting, I mean, really, they're risking the uh, physical status of their players. We have a break on goal and a tie-up, three-way tie-up. A Syracuse player, Chris Pace back there for Boston College. Mercurio kicks it out. Ken Keys with it now. He feeds it ahead. Looking for O'Brien, and it's cleared back to the keeper. Well, you can really hear the rain driving down here tonight. And it has really started to get cold as Pace clears it back to Mercurio really starting to get cold here it's been a little bit nippy all night but it's really starting to get downright cold with the combination of uh, being wet this 
misses Allen. He beats the Syracuse striker in. Ahead to Barsamian. Barsamian unable to get there, and then he slides beyond the ball, but now he gets back into the play, maintains possession. Looking ahead in the area, you saw the water hold that pass up. Here come the orange men. And I'll be honest with you, I really, even, even when I get a look at the back of the jersey, I can't make out the numbers now. Time left, 11 minutes, 40 seconds. That's in regulation. We're tied at two. Gary, do you remember an occasion where you finished regulation in a tie and the conditions were so bad that the coaches did say, let's let's settle for this? Uh, I don't think I've ever done it, Scott, but I've seen a few games where it has happened. It's a possibility. This is Schwake in front, oh. and it goes wide. Whitcomb out to stop it. As a player, would you be inclined to go up to the coach after regulation and say, Coach, do we have to do this for another 20 minutes? Well, I think the players are going to want to play. I think they, they want to prove that who's the better team, Syracuse or BC. So they're going to want to play. But I think the coaches have the responsibility to realize that you know, the field is so slick right now that the players can get injured very easily. Sean Lilly now, number nine, back in the lineup for Syracuse. That's Monis taken off the ball by Charles Mullen. Monis will get the throw in. Mullen will guard it. Gilligan puts it in front. Nobody home. And that's Mullen taken down from behind by Monis. Do I detect a payback? Judging by the look on Monis's face as he turned away from the play. This is O'Brien. O'Brien through one man, boots it through another. This is Monis now. He'll look to get it into the area. Blocked away and out of bounds. Monis will get the throw in. Now in the lineup for Boston University, fresh, or for Boston College, freshman John Merrow, freshman forward out of Maplewood, New Jersey. He's got a corner kick for BC. And this will be Minus handling it. The Syracuse defense seems to be falling apart, Scott. They're not marking well at all right now. They're giving the BC players a lot of space. Well, we'll look for Greg O'Brien. He's set up right in front. The keeper now calling out instructions. And Monis goes out deep with it. Weak feed toward the area, really held up by the water. Now, if you believe it, it's raining even harder. It seems like every two minutes, somebody turns up the faucet a little bit. We're under 10 minutes to play, 8.45, and a two-all tie. Boston College will try to come back now. Whitcomb will pick it up. And since the last time you said it, Gary, it's raining harder yet. High kick up into the rain and into the night. I don't think we'll see too many more substitutions. The players on the bench have to be getting very cold right now. I think we'll see the players on the field stay in for the rest of the game. The only thing cold on them will probably be their hands and maybe their feet. But other than that, they've been running the whole time. They're probably pretty warm. Monis has the ball stripped away as the Orange come back. Long feet ahead, and it'll go out of bounds. Just barely, almost held up by the water. Barsamian looking for someone to throw it to. He looks ahead for Allen. Out of bounds for a Syracuse throw in.
Make sure to tune in for our next New England College soccer matchup this Monday as the Syracuse Orange men travel to stores to meet the Yukon Huskies. Take delayed coverage begins Monday night at 1030. Make sure to check your Nesson listings for other broadcast times. That's Syracuse and Yukon this Monday night at 1030 right here on Nesson. Well, the Orange looking for a setup and they kick it out of bounds. You know, when we uh, see Syracuse take on UConn in our next game, the weatherman is calling for rain again, Gary. I know that thrills you. I certainly hope it doesn't rain there, Scott. We should be seeing a big crowd at UConn. It is homecoming, and Syracuse did defeat UConn in the last game. They played against each other. On a very controversial goal. Goal scored by Scott Oceani, and the replay we had on Nesson showed the ball to be out of bounds on the feed. And again, the field conditions taking their toll on the play on the field. Lugosi feeds it ahead. Boston College trying to come back. The Eagles lose possession. And again, they're at midfield, and we're looking at silhouettes. Feed back to Mercurio. As the rain continues to increase in intensity. Out of bounds. There's so much water on the field right now, Scott. The players can't even pass the ball to each other on the ground. It's going so slow. Now they're going to have to chip the ball in the air and let it skip to their, their, their teammates. You know, 20 minutes of overtime in these conditions, somebody could slip, somebody could slide, somebody could get hurt, and it could lead to a goal. But I think it would be kind of futile, actually, to try to play those 20 minutes right now. Look at the rain pelting down on the stands here at Boston College, and you can hear it pelting in the background. Direct kick for Syracuse. The wall set up in front. A high chip shot, way wide and way high. As we hit the five-minute mark, just under five minutes to play in regulation now in a two-all tie. It's very important to keep those shots on goal. You don't want to see those direct and indirect kicks going wide. You want to pressure the goalie and have a few people crashing on goal, especially in these conditions. Mercurio has had trouble holding on to the ball. Called out of bounds. Off Boston College. Syracuse throw in. And you can see the water just sloshing around now on the side of the field. High feed up in front. Going wide. Pace tries to clear it out. It's cleared out off of Pace. Syracuse will retain possession on the throw in. Boy, I'll tell you, Mercurio, again, you just mentioned Gary almost got caught on a misclear, and it was cleared away by Pace. Boy, Mercurio went down. The ball just went off his hands, Gary. We have seen it happen, and you just mentioned it. Once again, the man we highlighted before the game, Chris Pace, was in the right place at the right time, saving a goal. Boy, a, a real breath stopper for uh, Boston College. The ball wide open in front of the goal as it just deflected off of Mercurio. Didn't look that dangerous to start with, Gary. No, it didn't. PC tried to clear it. The nice, low-driven shot skipping up off the. Here it is. Once again, the BC defenders are trying to clear, but they can't do the conditions. And here's a nice pass back. Here comes the shot. It really did not look that didn't look dangerous, dangerous coming in. Syracuse has seemed to have waken up here, Scott. I don't know what, what, what happened. All of a sudden, they're starting to turn it on a little bit. Might be a little bit too late, though. There's only 2.55 left in the game. And again, you can see the water on the field. Certainly more water than turf down there now. As the ball comes out of bounds. Yes. Yep stand and take a look at it because you don't know if it's going to make it over that line through the water. There are
there are rivers running down the side of the field right now. Might I call these conditions ridiculous? Even a good foot on the ball can't get it to travel too far. But it almost died in front and set up a chance for Syracuse. Out of bounds. And it'll come back with Boston College on the throw in. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe this? We've got a drain pipe over our head. <laughs> the water is draining down on us. <laughs> Well, one of, one of our TV monitors has uh, blanked out. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. <laughs> Murphy's Law, just when things couldn't possibly get any worse, they do. That's O'Brien trying to feed it down the sideline. Nobody there to pick it up. Coming back for Syracuse is Charles Mullen. And Boston College down the far side, looking for a quick break. Schwakey's in front, unable to get the ball to him, almost had it to O'Brien. Feed it back outside, but Syracuse comes back. We have just one minute to play in regulation of a two-all tie, Syracuse and Boston College. And it will be interesting to see if there's any discussion with the coaches about calling this game a tie and sending everyone home. Here come the Orange again. Nothing doing, and boy, I'll tell you, Lugosi tried to make the defensive play, and he went down on his face in the water. And again, cleared away long by Boston College. We have less than 30 seconds to play in regulation. Schwakey loses it out of bounds on the far sideline. As the clock hits 20 and counts down. Play at midfield now. Nobody will get another scoring opportunity. Not in regulation. Two, one. That's the end of regulation. The score, Boston College two, Syracuse two. We'll be back to see if they play in overtime right after these messages. To be honest with you, I don't believe they're doing this, discretion being the better part of valor and whatnot, but uh, they are going to play the overtime. I can understand the uh, feeling of the coaches, Gary, that here are two teams that are winless in the Big East, and neither one, of course, wants to be 0-2, but 1-1 one one really isn't going to help you a whole lot this early in the season as far as sizing up your situation. At least if you come out with a loss, you know what the uh, situation is. So they're going to play it and hope to come out with a decision. But uh, we have 20 minutes of soccer coming yet in a driving rain at Boston College. The Eagles tied with the Syracuse Orange minute two after regulation. And the rain appears to have let up a little bit as the ball comes in on goal. Taken down by Mercurio. And we should mention that uh, as they uh, have started overtime, the two sides have switched sides. Two teams have switched sides. So they'll be playing to the opposite ends that they were playing to in the uh, second half. We will mention that they did not take advantage of the full five minutes that they get between regulation and overtime. They do want to expedite matters to some degree. I guess we can be thankful for that up here in the booth, Scott. Save two or three minutes. That's Schwakey passing the ball off. This is O'Brien for Allen. Allen puts it up in front, and it goes wide. It looks to me like both coaches before the other overtime instructed their players to take more chances to get the ball on net and hope for a breakthrough. Well... If somebody scores now, I can almost guarantee you it will be as the result of a break called, caused by the weather. You can say that the rain has let up a little bit, and it has, but it is still a torrential downpour. That's Mercurio picking the ball up, kicking it out.
Syracuse coming back on the attack. Things, of course, setting up very slowly in the water. Gilligan clears it back for Boston College. The Orange still have possession. Play moves into the Boston College zone. The Eagles will get a throw in. No, it, yes it will be, and it'll be Allen with a throw in. Sullivan leaving the ball in a puddle for Allen. Long throw in up in front, but Syracuse had the horses up there. The only man that appeared to be open in front for Boston College was O'Brien, or was uh, Gilligan, uh, Sullivan, and he was out far. O'Brien was in deep, but he was surrounded by defenders. Chris Whitcomb, the keeper for Syracuse, as we get the corner kick set up by Boston College. This will be Monis again handling the corner kick. Puts it up in front looking for a header. O'Brien went up, but Whitcomb held the ball out of bounds. He knocked it out, so it'll be another corner kick. It's a good ball there by Monas. They're trying to get it right in on goalie Wickham. They're going to test them in this weather. They should be doing it. They should have been doing it all game. Now they're really starting to put pressure on him. They started in the second half and now in the overtime. And you have O'Brien playing right in uh, Wickham's shirt. Now they got Lugosi up in front as well, but it's headed out by the defense. Ooh. Kicked high and wide. Actually, the first man on that, Allen, might have had the better shot, but as he turned to take the shot, he whiffed on it. We play two overtimes as we look at Tim Hankinson, a very wet Tim Hankinson and his wet bench players. We play two overtimes in college soccer, 10 minutes each, and again, you see the water coming into play. One of the reasons why it's difficult to believe that they really wanted to play this extra 20 minutes. This is Monis losing it out of bounds. But they play two overtimes. No matter what happens, they play the full 20 minutes. 10 minutes and 10 minutes. 10 minutes, a two minute break for a change of sides and then 10 more minutes. Pace clearing it downfield. Now Gilligan clearing it downfield. Headed back, starting to get a little back and forth now. Both teams seem to be content just to get the ball out of their own back, Scott. They don't want to give away a goal here now. Just playing the game very safely. Take Not too many chances, chances and you're going to slip. You're going to somebody's going to make a slip up on this water and it's going to cost you the game. And we almost had a slip up right there. A takedown called against Syracuse. And we are going to get a direct right outside the penalty right box. outside the penalty area. Boston College looking for the uh, break that could decide it right now. On the ground direct, and it's booted out by the defense and out of bounds. It's a very dangerous ball once again there by Barsamian. He's using the field condition, skipping the ball in front, hoping for a deflection into the goal. And he'll get a throw in this time. Out wide. And being tightly marked, unable to get it in, and almost turning the corner was Lugosi. Well, 3.45 to play in the first overtime. We're tied at two. Lugosi was a bit too slow there. He had a one versus one opportunity, waited too long. Two Syracuse players came over, and then Lugosi had a one versus two situation. Boston College bringing the ball downfield as you look at our end zone camera. And again, we apologize for not being able to bring you the sideline shots from our angle, but with all the water on the field, the lights are just reflecting right in our faces. And as we look down on the field, as we try to view the action at midfield, all we can see is silhouettes. And it would not make a very pretty camera angle for you to look at at home. That was Sullivan trying to get it into the area, unable to, it goes out of bounds. Throw in for Syracuse. Long throw in, he 
Pinky's looking for Oceani, who heads it back. Boston College brings it back now, however. Schwake with the ball. Lugosi puts it up in front. Sullivan unable to do anything with it. And it goes out of bounds. That head in by Barthamian, brought back by the defense. And again, just doing their best to clear it out, not make any mistakes, keep it away from the keeper. Once again, Scott, BC still seems hungrier than Syracuse. Syracuse seems content with the tie, while BC is really pushing for the third goal. Barsamian on the throw in. The defender gets in the way and heads it, to, heads it away. Syracuse will try to come back, but they can't turn the corner on the wet turf. Boston College maybe with a break here. That's a head to O'Brien, but he's unable to get in on the ball. Whitcomb pulls it down. Play continuing at midfield. Now into the Boston College end, but cleared back by Monis. The clock runs down. We have one minute to play in the first overtime. Syracuse and Boston College in a one-all Big East tie. Under a minute in the first overtime. We'll play another 10 after this as Syracuse sets up for the direct. Syracuse and should try and shoot this ball directly, and Tess Mercurio can have a few people follow up for the rebound, because Mercurio has been having trouble holding the ball. Might not be a bad idea to go high over the wall that's set up in front. Well, Mercurio seems to be out of position to me. Oh, you and were right. It's a goal. No, no it right. hit the side of the net, but you were right. He was beaten on that all the way. He was expecting to cross. He was way out of the net, expecting to cross. Nice shot to the near post, I believe. That was by number 17, Mark DeMonte. Nice try. Good effort. And, uh, really, you, you had Mercurio pegged. He was on the far side of the goal. And it just rippled the cords on the side of the net as we count down the final second of the first overtime. Two, one. We go to the second overtime still in a two-all tie. As the referee gives a signal for the teams to change sides, and I think that's exactly what they're going to do. He just gave them the signals, let's change the sides of the field. He's hustling the goaltenders to run down to the other net. We aren't going to take the two-minute break. We're going to, as soon as we get the goalkeepers to the opposite ends of the field, we'll get play underway here. The referee doing a good job of trying to keep things moving. Steve Grossman, our referee tonight, as we look on the Boston College sideline at Ben Brewster as he greets one of his players coming out of the lineup, Greg O'Brien. Okay, the clock is set. The keepers are set. We are ready to get action underway in the second overtime here tonight. Boston College and Syracuse. And a two-all tie as play goes on at midfield. Boston College now trying to take the first aggressive of the uh, half of the uh, overtime period. Schwake loses the ball out of bounds, has it cleared away by a Syracuse defender. And we will have a goal kick, or a corner kick, for Boston College. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, it is so wet out here tonight. What are we doing? Bonas sets up the corner. Looking for somebody in front, and it goes by everybody. Gilligan tries to pull it down. Lugosi, or Schwake tries to get it back into the area. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for Boston University, or for Boston College. This will be Allen throwing it in, looking for somebody in the area. Head up in front, and coming out, Whitcomb pulls it down but he doesn't manage to control it, but Syracuse will come back. Tim Hankinson, the coach of the Syracuse Orangemen, 
given the option at halftime, do you want to finish it off? He said, yeah, let's do it. We aren't going to get any wetter than we are right now. I think they did get wetter than they were right then, Scott. You think maybe he made a mistake coming back out for the second half? I think he did, Scott, because a player can get a serious injury on a field like this. It's so slick. You can see a player slip and fall into another player and break another player's leg. We can see a player tear his knee or ankle on this artificial surface. Well, Gary, you mentioned, uh, you know, the uniforms, jerseys getting very, very wet and very, very heavy. The shoes getting very heavy. It starts to take a lot out of you running in these conditions. Now, Syracuse has got to come back, and they don't even get a full two-day rest because their next game will be against UConn in the afternoon. This could have an effect on them when it comes to playing the University of Connecticut. A great point, Scott. Maybe Coach Hankinson should have thought about that considered that point and maybe he would have packed it in said oh, let's take on the Huskies on Sunday okay Syracuse coming back now play on at midfield this is pace with the ball for Boston College kicking it away headed back by Jeff Silver out of bounds however and Boston College with a throw in to Gilligan down the sideline being tightly marked that was taking them off the ball was Charles Mullen. And Mullen wins the throw in. This is Keyes being marked by Mullen now. Picked up by Silver, cleared out. And Syracuse comes back. Not much to set up in front. The defense is back for Boston College, and Barsamian clears it away, but the Orange bring it right back. Trying to break in now for Boston College. That's Schwakey sending it wide of the net. Boy, I just find it, I, I just can't believe that anybody is going to score the rest of the way, Gary, the way that they are playing very destructive sort of game just clear the ball out that's a good point scott uh it seemed to take away from a well-played game that they're playing this overtime the game was well played despite these rough field conditions and now both teams are content just to drive the ball forward out of their own defense well i think a lot of factors are uh, really entering into it all of them physical factors be it fatigue be it just being wet and miserable or whatever but i think people have gotten to the point now where they just want to get it done and get out of here we're under six minutes to play now as Ken Allen gets ready to throw the ball in for Boston College. Uh, still nothing doing in front and again a whiff on the ball. A ball taking funny bounces. It does not bounce like it normally does as Whitcomb comes out. Takes the shot down. It doesn't bounce like it normally does. It will die on you. And as you go to try to take what you would expect to be a normal bounce you whip over the top of the ball and that's what we have been seeing a lot of tonight this is Schwakey trying to feed it ahead has a man breaking and a takedown no call Sullivan was breaking no call Manas feeds it in front to Sullivan Sullivan back out to Manas who puts it in front again the orange raining to clear it. Silver coming out to check Manus. Manus trying to get it in. It's headed away in front by Andreas Montvia. Montvia pulls it out again. Under five minutes to play now as Allen throws the ball in for Boston College. Four and a half minutes to go. This is it. Doesn't matter what happens now. Score or a tie. The game will end with the end of this period. I guess we can be thankful this isn't an NCAA playoff game or a tournament game where we'd have to go to penalty kicks. Guy, we'd be here for another 10 or 20 minutes. Well, we could go two more overtimes and then penalty kicks even. Play pretty much being held around the midfield area now. Long kick in over the end line. 
Boston College goal kick. The wind blows, the rain falls, and now you can see on the field how the rain is blowing across, the water is blowing across the field as the wind has picked up along with the rain. Long kick out. We're down to the three minute mark in our second overtime. Three minutes to play here at Alumni Stadium at Boston College. Nothing really serious happening in front of the goal in the overtime periods. Couple of slight opportunities. Boston College now trying to set something up to Schwakey on the outside. Silver goes back. He doesn't have to pick it up, however. It's taken by the keeper, Whitcomb. Schwakey back on the keeper, keeping him honest. Kick out to the midfield area. And they say it is a Syracuse throw in. No, now they say the other way. Boston College Allen with a throw in. But he's unable to get anything going at all. You just saw Tom Scrivener go down on the wet turf. Here's Sullivan trying to get in, and Whitcomb gets a hand on it to drive it wide. This should be, well, they're, they're calling it a corner kick, a goal kick. It looked like Whitcomb had the last touch on that ball, though. It's a good hustle there by Sullivan. Lazy pass by the Syracuse defense. Uh, could have been due to the weather conditions as well, but when you're passing back to the goalie in this condition, you have to be very certain. You have to be very, make a very safe pass. That was very dangerous. The slipping and sliding continues on the wet, hard surface here at Boston College. Absolutely the worst conditions I can recall for any event I have ever broadcast. Syracuse with an opportunity in front. Mercurio unable to control the ball, but a dangerous play in front. Boston College will get a goal kick. Mercurio goes out to get the ball, and we wind down to the one-minute mark. We're down to our final minute of play here at Boston College in what will, I am sure, end in a two-all tie as Varsamian sets up the goal kick. And the wind really whipping up now as the ball skitters downfield. I think we had a dangerous play in the booth just now. <laughs> Whoa, somebody get the referee up here to whistle that tarpaulin. 30 seconds to play as play continues around midfield. And again, play back to midfield. Now, wait a minute. Syracuse had an opening, but the ball went wide. Syracuse looked like there was going to be an opening and nothing doing then as Pace takes the ball away. The clear out of bounds, we're down to 10 seconds. Syracuse will have one final throw in to see if they can get anything going. No, nothing doing. The clear out by Allen. The clock ticks down. That's the end of regulation. Two all, our final score. Gary, any final comment before we're out of here? Uh, despite the weather conditions, I think both teams played a nice hard game. It was an even game. I think a tie is just for how the game was played. I don't think the overtime should have been played. The conditions were absolutely the worst. Syracuse and Boston College finishing in a two-all tie. So both teams remain winless in the Big East. Once again, the final score from Alumni Stadium at Boston College. Boston College 2, Syracuse 2. <laughs>